Well, now we come to the main event for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. Samoa Joe defending against the man with the 28-1 and record, Hook. And I like Hook. He looks like a, a great young athlete. We haven't heard him talk ever. So that, the jury well, that is promo, still out on that. That promo from St. Mark's Place he was talking. I, I fast forwarded through that. Or was it, was it on television? It was on the internet. Oh, okay. Well, there's a lot of shit on the internet I don't have time to watch. Has he ever spoken on TV? I think he's had like one word grunt answers. Like, Ugh, you know. Like, Ugh. Okay. Ugh. But here's the thing. It's, he's 28. Tony was defending the choice. He's 28 and one in his wreck. It's a fucking work, you idiot. And besides that, he's beaten jobbers and indie guys. On YouTube, it is, it's not like he's had a consistent, coherent push over the last several weeks or couple of months to where now he's in line. It's just, you, Tony's numbers appeal to Tony. Everybody else thinks they're gaga because it's bullshit. And visually, this was hard to take, but with how both of them have been presented, this wasn't the, the Ricky Steamboat coming out of nowhere. Right, having been a preliminary guy, and suddenly, boom. You know, this was random and done because Tony was mad at being browbeaten on Twitter. And they kept it, you know, the, the entrances started at 9.47 and the bell for the match was 9.51. So they were going to keep it short regardless. Joe is good at this, but... Joe either was outvoted in terms of whoever the producer or Tony himself was on this or elsewise, he just wanted to do too much for Hook. Because they, about the first five minutes of this, it was actually one of the better things they've done. Hook opened up with the flurry like a bee on an elephant, but Joe leveled him. And Joe beat and kicked the shit out of him and taunted him and manhandled him and was leading the thing, and Hook would fight back, and Joe would sell it kind of plausibly, right? That he caught him off balance, or he hit him with something flying, or whatever. And then and Joe would then take back over. At one point, he rock-bottomed Hook on the announce desk. And Hook showed that he had guts. He flipped Joe off the finger, so Joe power-bombed him on the apron. And the doctor was checking Hook, but Hook wouldn't quit. And then Joe power slammed him and got a two count. And that's where it's starting to be too much here. Focus back on Joe. But then Joe gave Hook a Death Valley driver and got a two count. And I wrote, nope, they're losing the plot. Joe's having to work too hard now. The whole point of this was to elevate Hook in a loss to a bigger, stronger, more experienced, badder fucking heel that's the world champion, but because Hook won't quit, it elevates him another step, another level in the eyes of the people, and he has a good showing, but then Joe should have then taken back over for the final time, started pulling him up on counts, stretching the punishment out, he wants to show the other guys in the locker room. He's trying to set an example. And then that's when you have whoever your top baby face is that should be getting ready for Joe come out and help the fucking kid. But instead, what they do then, Joe gives him a muscle buster and Hook kicks out at one. And I wrote, now it's trash. A one count kick out. I would like to think that Joe was expressly told to do that because he's smarter than that. But who knows these days? And then Hook got up after the muscle buster and hit the ropes and took Joe down with a flying clothesline and another one and a third and threw rotten punches. Kid's got great judo. If he can't punch any better than that, he needs not to punch. He punches worse than a girl. What the fuck? Work on it or take it out, young man. 
And you can go back and look at the video, and and I dare you tell me I'm lying. Get your get your dad's opinion on those punches. And then he suplexed Samoa Joe. So now we have gone from getting Joe over as the badass heel world champion and elevating Hook by losing to a more dangerous, experienced competitor to putting too much work into putting faith in Hook, which would work with a guy that you're going to use ongoing as a regular top babyface, but they're not going to do that. And Hook's too green to do it if they were going to do it. So now they've completely changed the goddamn meaning and the way the people are subliminally taking this fucking match. And then finally Joe got the fucking choke on and the referee was checking hook and his arm dropped twice and my DVR froze. But I would like to think that he was choked out at that point. Brian, was he? He was indeed choked out. Hook lost the match. Good. And Samoa Joe retains the title with a a little bit of more respect for Hook. But that wasn't the... No! The the heel world champion is not supposed to get respect for Hook. The fans are supposed to get some respect for Hook for lasting that long against this badass, and the badass is supposed to get heat for treating him like a piece of shit when he finally had the advantage and Hook couldn't do anything about it, and he was helpless. Instead of Hook getting up and making a comeback after the muscle buster. You fucking morons. <sighs> Does that make any sense? Is This is not like this isn't something that Jerry Jarrett wouldn't have said in fucking five minutes 40 years ago if anybody was listening. Does that make sense how they changed the tone of what they were doing by going too far in the wrong direction with it? I don't disagree with you. But again, in terms of Jerry Jarrett would have said something, there's no Jerry Jarrett there. There's no wrestling mind at the top. There's someone who thinks he is, but he isn't. And booking nuance is not something that's going to (laughs) be paid much attention to in AEW. Well, I don't care how he books nuance. I wish he'd book his other guys better first before he books these new guys that he's signing, whether it's nuance or old aunts or anybody else. Yeah. Yeah, well, that was AEW Dynamite. It certainly was. I feel like we ought to call Stephen P. New and sue for the price of the electricity that I spent with the Louisville Gas Electric Company having my TV on for two hours on this thing. Well, I don't know if Stephen P. New can handle a case like that, and also I don't think I had the music queued up. Oh, here it is. Call Stephen P. the rest you know that's what we need to do brian class action suit everybody 800 and some thousand of them on wednesday nights they use two hours worth of electricity on their television they get together they file a class action suit stephen p new at newlawoffice.com 877-50-STEVE takes the case represents 800 and some thousand people for the he'll get at least what would you think? That that probably 47 cents of electricity your TV would use in two hours. He'll get at least $400,000 for those 800,000 people because Stephen P. New stands up for the rights of people who have been downtrodden. What do you think? 47 cents for the electricity. I don't know would what that be what talk- it is? I don't know what kind of math you're doing. Or I don't know how much that would A cost. A class but- action suit to reimburse everybody for the electricity cost that they use for watching that TV show for two hours on Wednesday nights. Is it just for the home viewers on TV or is it for people that had to get in their car and drive out there to the building or anyone who went by the signage? Oh, good what God, you- no. They ought to file criminal charges. <laughs> I'm just talking about a civil suit here. If you had to leave your home, especially in the weather that we've been having lately, and go down there and pay more to see that in person, I think you need to call the law. 
or Stephen P. New. We're back to talking about him. And what's yes, his... <laughs> how do you find that man, Jim? You find him. Well, I'll tell you how you find him. You just look for the vulture circling, and you know that there's another opponent of his in a court of law that's been waylaid and left out in the sun to rot. Stephen P. New, newlawoffice.com, 877-50-STEVE. 877-50-STEVE. I'm working on that one. Yeah. Beautiful, stylish flooring. I was trying to chew on something while I thought you were going to go a little longer and you didn't, so I stopped my... <laughs> Chew a little early. But is that what you're doing now? You're just taking goddamn meal breaks while I'm ranting and raving about shit? Think you got time? No, because I didn't think you were going to rant and rave. I thought you were going to talk about what a wonderful guy Stephen P. New was. And I said, you know, I just need to eat something. I haven't had yeah. anything. Yeah. Well, it don't take me long to talk about how great Stephen P. New is. Everybody knows it already. <laughs>